installing a new boiler in a cylinder cupboard. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video I'm going to show you how or what you need to do when you're going to install a new boiler into a, an airing cupboard or a cylinder cupboard. So if you've got to take, if you're going to take the, the old cylinder out, I'll show you what pipes you need to cut and, and what um, what you need to consider when you're going to when you're going to install a boiler into an airing cupboard. Also, we're going to put a combi boiler in the airing cupboard. So again, we'll show you what, or I'll show you what I, I believe you need to consider when you're going to install a combi boiler into an airing cupboard. I'm also going to try and answer some of the questions. One of the questions being asked already is from Ian, and he's put pumps and PRV just uh, discharge. So if you're going to use a condensate pump, what type of condensate pump would you use? So I'm going to try and cover all that in this video uh, and more, show you how to cut all the tanks out, etc. So yeah, let's have a look. So first thing I want to point out is I am not a trainer. I'm just trying my best to pass some knowledge on to new people into the industry. Uh, trainees and also people that's been doing it a few years but they might have been doing they might have only done breakdowns or they might have only done meter installs I've done this job for over 30 years and I, I started on this old stuff so th that's what I'm used to um, so yeah what I've got here I've got a little diagram it's not correct but it's just to try and give you an idea of what we're gonna try and do in this video so we're gonna we're going to remove this cylinder but we need to make sure we keep the correct pipes here so that we've got the pipes for when we put the new combi boiler into this airing cupboard. So if we start at the bottom here, how we're working here. So that the, the old boiler, normally it might be a heat only boiler downstairs in the utility room or in the kitchen. It'll have a little small gas pipe usually and it'll be a 15 millimeter gas pipe. So that's one thing that we're gonna to have to get up to this airing cupboard. We would normally have to update that pipe to minimum and i say minimum 22 millimeter it will depend on the boiler depend on the output but as i say minimum 22 millimeter <coughs> normally um and then what we've got to do we've got to remove these tanks we've also got to check for things like showers and baths are the tank fed will the showers work off mains pressure so that's just, just things to take into consideration when you're going to quote to put a, a new uh, combi boiler in. A few things to remember, or what I like to remember is OCP. When we have a look here, we've got your open vent, we've got your cold feed, and we've got your pump, and normally that's within 150 millimetres. So that's just something for you to check as well. We've also got the diverter valve that I've put there. And if we have a look on this here, so that's your OCP, open vent, cold feed pump. But if we have a look at the diverter valve here, cylinder, so B for bath, and then rads, A for air, that's how I remember it. So you've got your main flow from your boiler there, A, B goes into the valve, this valve decides which way it's going to send it, B goes to your bath, so B goes to your hot water cylinder, and A goes to your radiators. If we just have a quick look at a hot water cylinder, or a hot water tank, if we have a look in the airing cupboard here, you can see the pipes coming down, and this valve here, this gate valve, if you was just going to replace the cylinder, and you needed to drain the cylinder down, then this is the valve that you may turn off unless you decided to turn it off at the cold mains and, and empty the tank uh, as well. But this would be the valve normally. This is the gate valve you would turn off if you was replacing the cylinder. But on this occasion, this video is about taking the cylinder out. So all this pipe work here would just be removed. So when we go up into the loft, we've got two tanks on this job. The one on the left is the bigger tank. So that's the cold water storage tank and that's for that feeds the hot water cylinder. But also that could also feed 
say for instance if the bath was tank fed or there was a tank fed shower it could also feed the cold water to them so you could sometimes have quite a few pipes coming off this this bigger tank and then if we have a look on the right hand side the small tank here this this tank feeds the central heating so you can see that it's it's very very mucky on this one but this one feeds the central heating another thing to consider is if we're putting a combi boiler in is what is the flow rate so sometimes the tank fed could be higher than what you've got mains pressure so that's something that could catch you out so always check the flow rate on the cold water and the cold mains another thing we need to consider is if we're going to put a combi boiler in can we get a condensate pipe out and also the blow off if 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 we need if it needs a blow off some boilers don't need a blow off but we'll i'll go into that in a bit more detail later on also if you're going to bring if you're going to bring the condensate pipe outside how are you going to protect it does it need to be insulated does it need to be lagged and that's another thing to consider and also are you using the correct lagging so are you using a waterproof lagging so that's just a few of the things that you've got to consider uh, and one thing i wanted to point out as well is terminology of different um, components in a system so i would always call this a hot water cylinder and I'd always, I'd always call this a tank and, and different people call them different things but when I went to college that's how we were taught it's a long time ago things change and people like to change um, how they decide things and nowadays this is called a hot water storage vessel I think and this is a system I think they call it nowadays but yeah as I said different te terminology if you haven't done so already please give us a thumbs up and also add a comment below if there's no if you can't think of a comment just put boiler or something like that now we're going to have, um, have a look at how we would drain this down what pipes we need to cut out etc one thing to point out with this cylinder this cylinder would normally have a coil in here i have done another video which is called um, how does a hot water cylinder work so if you just search on on youtube and you and you can find that video and that shows you a cut out section of a cylinder and it shows you how this works so i, I think that that's a really interesting video if you're training so first of all what we're going to do here we would turn the mains off the cold water mains because we're going to cut these we're going to take these tanks out for the purposes of this video i haven't put the cold mains pipe in just because it'll be a little bit confusing here, there'll be too many pipes. But we would have a, on here, we'd have a cold pipe, a cold pipe, and then this would come down from here, through the airing cupboard, and, and, and what we'd normally do is cut it down in airing cupboard. But we'll add that pipe back in after, once we've deleted some of this out of the way, if that makes sense. So, what we've done, we've, we've gone downstairs under the kitchen sink or wherever, We've turned cold water mains off. And then what we need to do, we need to drain the heating. So this small tank is gonna drain the heat inside. And we would also open the hot tap. Opening the hot tap will drain this tank up here. And what it'll do is, oh, that valve that I showed you earlier on, on the cylinder, this would be this valve here. So as I say, if you was just gonna change a cylinder, you may use that gate valve, turn that gate valve off, um, open your hot tap, cut this pipe here and, and change your cylinder. But obviously for this one, we're going to remove the cylinder. So we've, we've gone downstairs, we've turned the mains off, the cold mains. We've opened the hot and cold taps, get as much water out as we can. And then what we need to do then, if you can, is find a drain off for the central heating. So if there's a radiator that's got a drain off on, start to drain the heating down and what that will do that will drain this tank down here so then you'll be draining the water out of here and then 
once you've drained that out of there you can start cutting some of this out this here so we can cut all this out just to bear in mind we're going to need some of these pipes again so you just need to make sure that you've marked the pipes so you know which pipes are which and on this the pipes we're going to need is this one here because that one there goes to the central heating so that's the pipe that we need the one that comes up from the boiler normally you just disconnect it so if you see there it only goes back to the boiler and it may be on the top of the boiler as well you've also got a drain off and you might want to open that as well just to get some pipe uh, to get some water out of this section of the pipe work not all central heating systems or systems with cylinders are piped the same so this is just for this is just to give you an idea of what it could be piped like um, so i'm not telling you that this is what it will be like on your system this is just to give you an idea of what the pipes may be on your system and now what we're going to do we've started to drain this tank down so we've, we've drained the water off we've got the water out we've opened the hot tap the hot tap has now removed the water out of this tank and it'll take it down to about here and that's about the maximum it's going to drain it to to there and we're still going to have water in this hot water cylinder i did do a video on how to drain a hot water cylinder i'll just show you a little clip of that now i'll give you a little bit of a laugh so as I say, I did a full video on this and it was how to drain a cylinder hot water tank leads plumber. So if you wanted to search for that, you can search for that. But what you're doing, all you're doing is you're siphoning the water out of the cylinder. I will also show you another way that you can do it in a minute. But this just shows you if you're putting your hose pipe into the top of the cylinder, into the hot water cylinder, and then all you're going to do then is you take your hose obviously to the, to the outside and then you would suck on that hose and you're siphoning the water out of the system and if you just see i'm just going to show you just going to suck it out of this this is just vimto but i'll just suck it out of here and suck it into this other tube so it's really easy really really easy to do once you once you know what you're doing and you don't spill it I didn't half have some fun doing that video. I got I got Vimto everywhere. Another way to drain a cylinder, sometimes you'll have a drain off. So sometimes you'll have a drain off like this on the bottom of the cylinder. Might be there. So you might be able to drain it off through the drain off. That's another way you can do it. My, my The way that I would normally do it on this pipe here, and I've said this before in other videos, but I'd have a push fit connection which is 22 millimeter to 15 normally a speed fit connection and one side of it connect to hose pipe so i'd have a little bit of 15 mil copper into your hose pipe into the speed fit reducer and then just push that on there and i'd slacken this nut off slightly at bottom and then i'd fold this pipe down if there's nothing in front of it here so you, you cannot always do this but if you can, it just lets full flow out and it enters it right down to the bottom of the cylinder as well, which is, I, I like it this way. Obviously here, you'd have to make sure that you were careful and you didn't spill any water, put some towels there or, and once you've got this folded down, you can also nip that nut back up a little bit if you did do it that way. And then the other way of doing it is like what we've already said, is siphon it out. So you can use, what if you siphon it out, what are you gonna do? You're going to connect, disconnect that off there, your top of your cylinder. You will get a little bit of water that will come out here when you do that. So you might just want to have some towels or some blue row or something around there. And then what you need to do then, you need to put something down in this hot water cylinder. So it may be you can put a bit of speed fit or a bit of copper pipe. And then what you need to do is this bottom bit here, you don't want it to be totally touching bottom so sometimes you can put a little bend on a bit of 15 mil copper pipe and then this comes out of top here and then you have your hose pipe on here 
and then you're siphoning it like I've shown you in that video. I hope that makes sense. But what you're doing, this volume of water here, you need to get this volume of water out of the hot water cylinder. And then once you've done that, you can then take this out. So we've now got it empty. We remove this cylinder. So now we've got his return there. So that, that would have been the return from the cylinder and also the return from the central heating. And a lot of the time, this will just be under the floorboards and there'll be a T. And normally, or a lot of the time, that pipe, the, that, this pipe here, the return, it'll go back to the boiler like that. So then what we do then, we, we, we need to connect onto, onto the rest of the heating system so we need to connect onto some of these pipes here. We also need to connect onto this hot, the hot tap bit as well. The T here that would be on the return, it should be the last T, but it's not always piped like that. So you just need to be very careful. Sometimes you might have to cap off down here, near boiler or just above boiler, just depends. Obviously you want to cut this back this as far as you possibly can ideally if that is the last tee you want to just cut it here and then just get rid of all this so now we've done a tightness test on the gas we've done our electrical checks to the tb118 uh, safety bulletin so if you haven't seen i've done a video on um, on that as well i've also got um got a really interesting video coming soon I've got a really really good trainer he's, he's actually been a trainer for over 20 years and he's an amazing amazing guy um, and I've got him he's going to go through some electrical um, what tools you need as a, um, to do this job also how to test how to test gas valves all sorts of different things and as I say he is an expert uh, I won't spoil it for now and tell you who it is but um, first video should be next week so yeah you should hope you're looking forward to that it should be good um so yeah so you've done your safety checks you've you've, you've done your gas you tested your gas you've disconnected your gas here put a cap on it obviously we, we're not allowed to leave an open end on a gas pipe so we'd cap that we're then going to remove this boiler now we've made all the electrics safe cut this out And this flow pipe here, that would still be, well not normally, normally you're still going to have that sticking down under. What I would what I would do, I would always put a stop end on there just in case somebody's piped it in a way that you don't expect. So I'd always put a stop end on there or maybe even connect a push fit um, isolation valve or something like that. So that you can open it and see if it's it, it, see to make sure it is dead after you've installed your new boiler because then you could then just cut this pipe up above ceiling if you can get onto the floorboards above then you could cut pipe back put a stop end on it or um there so it's, it's always good practice to put stop ends on any pipes just in case anybody comes along later on i did go to a job many many years ago and it were an old servo warm system and with an old servo warm system they used to have a header tank up in the loft but it didn't have a ball valve on it and you had to fill it up with a hose pipe and this boiler wasn't working so the the engineer that had been out to it he put his hose pipe up into this tank in the loft but what he did what he wasn't aware of the system had been changed and the tank was still there and this pipe work was still there but it went under floor and it was no, no longer in use, but he filled that up. And the, where the pipe, the pipe had just been cut and just left under floor, under floor, um, uh, you know, like un, in the bedroom, for instance, under the floor. And as he filled that up with a nose pipe, you can imagine the the floor below there were a black sludge and every, it made a right mess. So as I say, it's always good practice to put stop ends on any any pipes. 
you, you have to do that with gas any unused gas pipes anyway but it's still good practice to do that as well with water pipes so these are the pipes we've got left now so this one here would be from the pump so we'd get rid of that one now and as we can see that would have been that would have been the a and b into the valve this would have been the b into the hot water cylinder and then this would have been the a a for air and this would go around the central heating so now we just need to chop these out bearing in mind this pipe here we need to reuse so we can now just cut out the rest of these pipes so that's the that would have been the flow pipe that came from the boiler cut all this valve out cut all this bit out and as you're doing this just make sure the most important pipes of all that you need to be aware of is the the flow and the return so the main flow and return so you need to make sure if that's got a T in it uh, if you can go under the floor and see it's got a T in it you can try and test that if not you might have to cut that pipe back on the return you'll have to you'd have to see but hopefully hopefully now we'd have the we'd have the flow coming up there we'd have the return coming up here and then you'd still have your hot tap here and then you'd have your cold your cold mains would normally come down in the airing cupboard so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to wipe this off and then we're going to start with us boiler we'll have a look at flowing options gas options and also um, we'll talk about the getting rid of condensate and the PRV as well. So this is an Ideologic boiler installation that John Love Your Plumber um, installed. I went and did a video with him. And this just gives you an example of the pipe work. So as always, you would need to read the installation instructions so you make sure that you're installing the boiler correctly. Also on this, you can see it's got a filter on. It's also got a shock arrestor on this one. Now we'll have a look at which pipe goes where. Also, we'll have a look at the flowing options as well. Uh, also, we can have a look at the gas and where, where the gas could be run. So I've just put this cold pipe back here now, just so we know which pipes are which. So we'd have off the top of the cylinder, we'd have the hot tap, hot pipe there. So what we'd normally do, we'd normally cut these down in, in the in the old airing cupboard, maybe under floor, so you can make your pipe work nice and neat. We've got us flow and returns. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna cut these back, cut them out of way, I'm gonna put the boiler on there, and then we're gonna talk about the gas pipe, we're gonna talk about the condensate pipe, and we'll talk about flowing options as well. One thing to point out, very, very important, always read the installation instructions for the boiler, especially if it's the first time you're installing a particular boiler, um, just to make sure that you're installing it correctly. Does it need flu? Does it need screws in flu? Doesn't it need flu, uh, screws in flu? Different boilers ask for different things. So as I say, it's always important to read the installation instructions. Because I've got these installation instructions handy, this is for the Ideal Vogue and it's for a 32 kilowatt Ideal Vogue. We'll use these for, for this example if you like. So if we have a look at, um, on the left we'd have the flow. On most boilers, almost all boilers, Worcesters, Baxi, Ideal, um, they normally have standard DIN. So you'll have a flow, hot, gas cold return that's that's what you'd have, have as standard on return we'd normally put a filter put a filter on there to stop any muck and sludge going back into your new boiler obviously you will have flushed the system out if we have a look at the gas pipe gas pipe is normally in the middle on these and what we need to know about the gas pipe is the gas supply it needs to be sized in accordance with British standards BS 6891 2005 and that means that across the pipe work we're only allowed one millibar drop 
So what that means is it's very important that we size the gas pipe correctly. So we're testing working pressure now, so not standing pressure. So sometimes people get confused with working pressure and standing pressure. So working pressure is when the appliance is in, in use. So that's, that's the working pressure. So we've put the boiler on, the boiler's on high fire, and we test it at meter here. And as an example, let's say we're getting, we're getting 20 millibar. 20 millibar at the meter. What that means is, on this inlet pipe work here, we should be getting 19, um, 19 or more, because that's the maximum. So across this pipe work here, we're allowed one millibar drop on working pressure. Now you need to read the installation instructions because sometimes we're not testing it on pipe work, sometimes we're testing it inside the appliance. And when we're testing it inside the appliance or on the gas cock underneath the boiler, there's extra resistance. So sometimes the manufacturers will allow more of a drop. So for instance, on some boilers, they'll give you a chart and it might say 30 kilowatt boiler, you're allowed 1.5 in addition to the one. So 1.5 will be across the components in the, in the boiler, if you like. So what that would mean, say for instance, this pipe here, now we're testing it to here. We're allowed an additional 1.5 because we're testing it from gas valve inside boiler. That would mean inside the boiler, we'd be allowed 17.5. So we'd, be, we'd allow us first one millibar to the appliance and, and then we'd, have, we'd be allowed an extra 1.5 across the appliance so so from the meter to the gas valve or whatever it is it may be that you're allowed 2.5 i hope that makes sense as, as i've said previously i'm not a trainer i'm just trying to help um you guys hopefully raise the standards and, and understand things a, a little bit better really so that's the gas pipe there is some really useful apps on gas pipe sizing so if you're going to go do a boiler do you hit do your gas pipe sizing especially for the first fuel that you do definitely work it out so you know we have done some videos as well on gas pipe sizing so you can always watch them videos and, and see if they could help you with the gas pipe sizing as well and always remember if you're going to work on a boiler or any gas appliance you must be gas safe registered or competent to do so this video is aimed at trainees people that are they're going to be qualified or they may have done a different job they may have done meter installs or whatever and it's just to give them a bit of guidance but always always read the installation instructions always read your, uh, read the gas manuals and never ever take any videos off the internet as fact because things change over time Next thing I want to look at is the condensate pipe. And this is, this is something that's overlooked quite a lot. So the condensate pipe needs to be installed to the British standards BS6798. And what, the, what that says, and when you look in the installation instructions, and these are, these are old instructions. This, this is from a, I think it's about five or six year old boiler this now. Um, but the, 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 insul uh, the insulation needs to be waterproof and you need to check you need to check that that insulation is waterproof now i use people will have seen me use this now which is the condensate pro and the reason i use this i'll just show you this this comes in kits and this is, it's pre-coated lagging, so it's waterproof out of the box. If you buy some other manufacturer's lagging um, or insulation, the stuff that we've been using for years that we all thought that we were allowed to use, it's not waterproof and it needs to be painted. You also need to paint it twice and you need to paint it twice within seven days of installing it. So when you're, gonna, when you're going to install new boilers, it's not a practical solution. 
So just check that you're, you're using the correct lagging. And, and as I say, always read the installation instructions. And if you don't know, if you read them and you don't really understand them, find out, ask, and just find out what the answer is. But that's, that's the condensate. And this is just an example of how you would do a condensate pipe down into the drain with the waterproof lagging on it. And we had a question asked on the last video, so I put, um, I said that we're gonna do this video and asked for some questions and that I'd add them in this video. And Ian asked um, about condensate pumps. Well, I very, very rarely use a condensate pump and people will have different opinions of, of this, but in my opinion, the things that fail when you're doing a condensate and that are almost guaranteed to fail at some point are condensate pumps and if you're connecting next to a sink because it'll block up and they're the, they're the faults that I go to condensate pumps spilling over etc and, and waste pipes blocked so I tend to always try and use your own condensate all the way to the drain outside that's my personal choice please put a comment below and let me know what you think to that but I did put a question on to gas chat and you would you would have to check the installation instructions but I asked what pumps people are using uh, for the PRV and the condensate and people have put that the Grunfoss Conlift is suitable as I say you'd need to check with them if I was going to install a condensate pump I would check with the manufacturers at the time to make sure that it was suitable so that's that's the answer hopefully that answers the question Ian um, but if you've got any more questions as I say put some comments below and also you need to consider them freezing as well so that that's why we'd use the insulation lagging etc so now we're going to look at installing the flu and this is on lots and lots of ideologics or ideal flues in general is where people tend to get it wrong with the ideal flu you're not supposed to have any white on show so if we have a look in the installation instructions it does show you it's very clear it tells you how to install the flu and the rubber must um, must cover the end of the flu and I couldn't see it in the installation instructions about how to seal the flu. So what I did, I phoned Ideal Boilers. And Ideal said that the flu needs to have sand and cement in the flu to seal it. So if we have a look on this job here, you can clearly you can just pull the flu out. So it does need to have sand and cement according to Ideal. So that's a clear example, if in doubt, find out personally i would always sand and cement the flu that's just i think it's common practice some manufacturers may say that you don't need to do that but why not you know if in doubt just sand and cement it um but that's a clear example of font manufacturers it's not an installation instruction so font manufacturers and ask them and they'll give you an answer and if need be if it was somewhat more important then you might want to ask the manufacturers to send you it in writing. Uh, what we're going to do now, we'll just have a quick look. So that were a horizontal flu. So that's if as airing cupboard was on an outside wall and the flu was going to go straight outside, that would be the flu for that. If if we're going to take it up through the house into the loft, we're going to have a little quick look at that now. With the ideals, you need an adapter that goes on top of, uh, top of boiler. And again, it's all in the installation instructions how to do that so you have your adapter goes on to the top of the boiler and this is this is the important thing that you need to be aware of obviously you need to read the installation instructions and make sure that you're correct things change over time etc but on every joint what, what you're trying to do you want to make sure that this flow is supported so if you check it about it's supported it can't move it can't fall off it can't, um, the terminal can't blow out in wind, etc. And, and I seen one other day on a, somebody put a picture up of a job and, and, and the job were really nice. The install was lovely, 
but the flue as it came through the roof it had two 45 degree bends on and then it had a clip below the two 45 degree bends but none of that top bit had any clips on so that could just fall off um, that particular flue didn't need screws so it could just fall off um, so always make sure that you support the flue more clips is better than less clips and personally I would say that and, and as I say, read the instructions, but at very maximum, every meter or change of direction or and change of direction. So if you're going to change direction, make sure you've got a clip on it. Keep it all secure. Um, very important. And also, we used to use many, many years ago when I first started out, we used to use lap band. So like gal band, we used to wrap it round and we used to tie up to rafters. Obviously, as time moves on, we're no longer allowed to do that. Um, so again, don't use lap band. Make sure you use the correct clips for that for fluing. So clearly, we used to use lap band, and that is now seen as being incorrect. So somebody who's always used lap band for years that and and come up with times. So we used to use. We used to use this stuff. So things change and this is why any of these never ever never believe that somebody is better than you because everybody is always learning. I'm learning every day. Even me doing these videos, I learn from doing the videos because people add comments below and say you well if you'd have done this, this could be better. So we're always learning. So even if you're at the start of the journey now of learning, when you get to my my sort of age, you'll still be you'll still be learning. So every day is a school day and every day you'll be learning, but just find the answers so you know that you're installing things correctly. So this is just an example now of the flu going up through the roof here. So you'd have your flu here, you'd have your adapter here so you can test it. And then what we need to do, so we've done the flue now, we need to have a little think about commissioning the boiler, also what controls we're going to use. So now we need to use, we need to, we need to use boiler plus compatible controls. And again, one of the, one of the lads in, a, in the training group the other day, he was working with a, with a plumber and they'd replaced the boiler and he was putting some pictures on and they hadn't quite finished it yet and they were asking if we could give them some feedback and they still had the old control on there it was an old Honeywell control and it wasn't compatible and so we just pointed that out to him uh, and they're going to change that anyway but we pointed that out and so now he knows that he, he needs to use Boiler Plus control so as I say every day is a school day people are learning sometimes things change and regulations change and and how do you know you know so you know it's, it's hard sometimes to keep up with the changing you know things that change and anyway, i'm babbling on about that but so smart controls we need to start using controls now that are boiler plus compatible they need to be a smart control also these are the options now where you can have internet controls as well i normally use the eph controls the combi pack the combi pack four but they have got um they've got a smart one now as well i've not actually installed one of these yet i might do a video on installing that um and now i want to talk a little bit about commissioning we're going to do a video on commissioning um, actually i think it's the next video that we're going to do so we're going to do i might be I've got a trainer coming to do some videos with me and we've done a few videos already which we haven't um, we haven't turned on yet um, but they're coming soon and we've got on them videos we've got how to set the gas valve we've got how to use the multimeter and other equipment correctly also how to test gas valves and all sorts of different things we've also got how to use your multi um, use your flue gas analyzer for commissioning so how to test the flow and return temperatures um how to test the 
the hot water coming out the tap and how to set that correctly. And when you're commissioning the boiler, also it's going to depend on the installation instructions. Normally you would have a 35 degree rise. So if you've got 10 degrees coming in, you'd be expecting to get 45 degrees. So we've got a bow on the hot, so this is the hot tap now. We've got about 11 litres a minute. It's about 11 litres a minute. So we now would expect that temperature to be minimum 50 degrees really. It may be that it's a little bit more than that as well. So we'll just have a quick look at that. So yeah, it's about 50 degrees, just short of 50 degrees. So that will depend on the boiler, the manufacturers, the output of the boiler, etc. But what we're testing, we're testing the temperature rise and if it's if it's working as per the installation instructions. So quite a few of the times when customers phone you with, with problems and they say they've got no hot water it could be you go out to it and the boiler's working perfectly fine but it might be it, it may be that they've installed a 24 kilowatt boiler and it's the middle of winter so the temperature of the water coming in is cooler and then it's giving the temperature rise or another another thing as well it could be that they've got the boiler might might want to achieve between nine uh, maybe nine liters a minute at a 35 degree rise but it could be that the property's got 15 liters a minute on the cold which would mean that the hot water you'd have to turn the hot water really down back to the nine liters a minute to achieve that 35 degree rise so i hope that makes sense um so sometimes you need to install a larger boiler Personally, I don't usually install 24 kilowatt boilers. I'd normally install a 28 or a 30, depending on the brand. Um, but yeah, I hope you found this video of some use. If you've got any questions, please ask them in the comments below. As I say, we have got some more um, some more videos like this coming uh, coming soon. The, the the smaller snippets, so that you don't have to watch these big long videos. Um, yeah um, please put some comments below um a lot of time and effort goes into these videos so really appreciate if you could put a thumbs up on there um that'd be great um thanks for watching my name is alan hart and today i'm going to